everyone. We're here at King's Dominion for opening weekend of their inaugural Food and Wine Festival. The festival is running five Saturdays and Sundays throughout the month of August, with the last day being Sunday, August 25th. We're going to take you around and show you the offerings that they have for this year's Food and Wine Festival. And just so you're aware, for the most part, it's contained within the Old Virginia area of the park if you're looking for it. If you don't go by the Old Virginia area, you won't know without coming here. So we're going to take a look around and show you what they have. And also, maybe if we stumble across anything else that's fun and new, we'll show that to you too. So let's take a look at what they have. So here's a quick look at the Food and Wine Festival menu. As I mentioned, it's in the Old Virginia area. Here is a map. They only have three different locations where you can pick up items to drink and eat. Number one is the Parched Pig and Bar, which is actually right by where the map is. It's right here, this little bar. And they have five different wines to choose from, all of which are from Blue Ridge Mountains. Number two is the Parched Pig and Booth, which is over on the opposite side of the King's Dominion Theater. We'll get to that in a little bit. They have wines from Piedmont. And then the third Parched Pig and Booth is near the Blue Ridge Tollway. They also have four wines from various places, Coastal Plains, Tidewater Valley, and Ridge Wines. And of course, it wouldn't be a food and wine festival without food. So these are available at all three of the wine locations. You can get a charcuterie for two, a flight of spreads, a fondue, a sommelier selection, a palmier, and a baker's basket. Since it wasn't on the sign outside, here's a look at the actual prices. As soon as the TV comes back on, here we go. Charcuterie for two is $17.99. Flavor spreads $10.99. Fondue is $9.99. Somalia selection $11.99. Pommier $7.99. The Baker's Basket $9.99. You can get a full five ounce pour of wine for $11. A wine tasting with a two ounce pour for $4.29. You can get a flight of four wines for $16.99. And you can get a Frosé for $17.99. They added a sign onto the Parched Pig Bar sign showing what all they have here. A nice summary of everything. And next to that they also have this cool display of wine barrels and grapes. Obviously not real grapes, but it's still cool looking. And also, as you saw in the opening, they have this cool food and wine festival sign with some flowers. So the decor is pretty awesome. They have this cool little photo op spot here. You can look like you're squashing grapes out of I Love Lucy, if you've ever seen that classic episode of TV. One of the places not listed on the map with the menu is Dogwood's Grill. They have all of the food and wine festival menu items here as well. Here's their wine menu they have posted on the fence outside. They also let you know everything that they have available up on their TVs out in front. When the map said Parched Pig Booth, this is what they meant. Next to the Grizzly Falls game, there's this little tiny food and wine festival booth sitting here where you can order your wine and food. Again, same food options as everywhere else. Of course, how could I ignore all the giant grapes hanging from above as you're walking through Old Virginia? They have a bunch of food and wine festival flags too along here, but we'll see plenty of those later in the video. They're all over the place for this event. Directly in front of the King's Dominion Theater, they've put up a stage here. There's periodically music, live music being played here. Nice cool food and wine backdrop they have here. The bands that play each day change periodically. I'm assuming this means that the band playing today are the Loyal Skeptics. Something I'll be 
My good friend is Tom Curry, yeah. Yeah. This area is also home to a little bit of a play area where you can relax and play some games. They have this giant Jenga. They also have some Connect Four and some Cornhole here. I'm trying not to zoom in on those particular games because there are people playing them at the moment, but here's the giant Jenga at least. The Food and Wine Festival booth on the other side of the King's Dominion Theater has a selection of these four wines. And again, the same foods as everywhere else. There's also another really cool photo spot here. You look like you have butterfly wings painted all flowery. Nice food and wine festival backdrop. Looking closely at this photo backdrop, you can tell that it's hand painted. It's really well done. And speaking of hand-painted, much like they had for Grand Carnival, they have a paint-by-number wall here where you can pick a paint color and paint, a partic paint that particular color on its matching corresponding number. As this is opening weekend, second day of the festival, it's not very far along so far, but hopefully we'll have time to come back here by the end of the event and see what it looks like then. Jen picked out the number three, which is this dark pink magenta type color. So she'll be painting some spots on the board at, on number three, and they said that you can throw away your paintbrush after you're finished. And the paints are at a little picnic table right next to the paint by number board. And here's Jen's finished product. Four pink squares in the middle of this field of white at the moment. Right across from the paint by number board, they have a selection of four carnival style games. Except that these carnival style games are a little bit on the lower scale. They aren't as fancy as what you would typically find at a theme park for carnival style games. They have a caber ring toss, which is your standard ring toss game, but they're using wine bottles here. Next to that is Sour Grapes, which is a balloon popping style game. So you can, depending on how many tokens you choose to spend as what size prize you win. And then on the other side, Pinot Toss. Pinot Toss is kind of like your standard goblet toss. You try to land a ball in either the blue or the red goblet. If you land it in a blue, you win a regular size prize, and the red wins a large prize. On the other side, they have the Great Corksby, which they have five jars of corks here and you need to correctly guess how many corks are in any of the given bottles to win a large prize. These squishables here. 
in the middle of the games is the booth where you actually buy your tokens. Here are the prices for the tokens. You can get three for 15, six for 25, or 18 tokens for $60, which are the same prices as the tokens that were at Carnival. And they have a rule for no prize trading at the bottom. So we're sitting inside the parched pig. We got the, well, Jen got the Frosé, which comes in a souvenir Pilsner glass with the King's Dominion Soak City logo on it. So that's a, it's actually a pretty good price to get alcohol and a souvenir glass together. We also got the Flight of Spreads, which is, as the name implies, bread with different spreads. There's three different spreads and a strawberry. And we're very strawberry happy because we also got the Baker's Box too, which comes with three different treats and another strawberry. So just to clarify, the white spread here is a whipped goat cheese. The other spread next to that is pimento cheese. And this last spread down here is an olive tapenade in the flight of spreads. And for the baker's basket, they have what's very hard to pronounce. I think it's pronounced gougere is what these three puffs are. In the middle is zucchini bread, and at this end are onion spirals. Jen thought that the frosé was pretty good. It has a, a vague fruity flavor. It's kind of an indistinguishably fruity flavor. Maybe strawberry, maybe something else mixed in there, but this a pretty sweet drink as you would expect from a frozen cocktail, but she enjoyed it. As for the breads, the Gougere was actually very surprising. It's a soft flaky pastry with a cream inside and the cream is sweet at first but then it hits the back of your throat with some spice. We were looking online to see what Gougere is typically filled with and it can be filled with a whole bunch of stuff so I don't know specifically what they filled these with but whatever it is has a subtle spicy kick to it and it was a really big surprise. Speaking of surprises, the zucchini bread has kind of the texture of banana bread but obviously not the flavor. It doesn't really come across as being very zucchini flavored but it has a, a hint of sweetness that ended up making it really good, really soft and moist. The onion spirals. I, full disclosure, I'm not a big fan of onion, so Jen guinea pig this. She ended up eating the whole onion spiral that got eaten. She said that it has a good cracker-like flaky pastry on the outside. The cream inside and the onions on top give it kind of a sour cream and onion kind of flavor, which I like sour cream and onion flavor, but she said that the, the onion portion of the sour cream and onion flavor is very pronounced, which is something I would not enjoy, so I decided to avoid these altogether personally. But if you enjoy onion, and especially sour cream and onion flavor, you'll probably like them. Eating a little more of the Gougere, Jen decided to lick a little bit of the chocolate on top by itself and she realized that that is what the spicy kick is from, not the filling inside. So if you're trying to avoid spice, try to avoid the top of this and just eat the filling. So first of all, the olive tapenade was pretty salty, but considering it's made with olives and olives typically are pretty salty, that's not too big of a surprise. It, tasted kind of like you would expect it to have. This is my first time trying olive top and not. I've always wanted to try it. I wasn't disappointed. I enjoyed it. But not as much as I personally enjoyed the goat cheese. The goat cheese had a nice tang to it. So that was really enjoyable. And this last piece of bread you can see here has some of the pimento cheese on it. Pimento cheese was Jen's personal favorite. She's always been a big fan of pimento cheese, and I saw it's not too big of a surprise. That had a, a little bit of a spicy kick to it. All three of these pretty much taste like you would expect them to taste, but that does, that's not a bad thing. They all had a really great flavor, and it's really hard to choose a favorite between them. The breads, I didn't talk about the breads earlier. They gave a three pieces of a flatbread, which is this piece of bread here soft and chewy and then conversely they had this what what i'm calling italian bread because i'm not entirely sure what type of bread it's supposed to be it's hard it's almost like a crouton so you have two very different textures there 
both of them actually work really well as vessels for the dip. So overall, it's a really good selection here for this plate. I'm not really a wine drinker, but they had this wine on the menu, the blackberry wine. That's an apple-based wine, it said according to the menu. So I thought maybe this one will be sweet enough to where I might actually enjoy it. It comes in this plastic food and wine festival logo cup. So if you choose to, you can take this cup home as a souvenir. Kind of a nice touch. It's not even that much money, considering they give you a souvenir glass with it. So let's give it a shot. So this wine actually isn't too bad. The blackberry comes through pretty strongly, but so does the alcohol. It's very heavily alcoholic, which was really surprising for something that should have been so fruity. I didn't mind it. Of the handful of wines I've ever had, this is probably my favorite, but it did suffer from the fact that their bottle of wine is kept at room temperature instead of chilled. It probably would be even better if it had been chilled. So, Obviously, I don't want to put ice in the wine, but it definitely could have. It would have definitely tasted better if it was colder. There is a surprising lack of food and wine festival merchandise at King's Dominion, but inside of the Grizzly Gulch General Store is the one food and wine festival piece of merchandise that they have. It's this T-shirt. King's Dominion Food and Wine Festival logo here for $24.99. And let's see, anything on the back? Nope, nothing on the back. So yeah, it's just this logo, but it's cool to have a coaster going into a wine glass. I actually do really like that logo that they have here. While we're by the Grizzly, I wanted to mention it's a little bit of a running joke with me that Grizzly Snacks is never open. Well, here we go, it's open finally. It's nice to see it open. In true International Street fashion, they have decorated the area for the food and wine festival with these flags all along on both sides of the street on both sides of the fountain unfortunately this is really the only major decoration that they've done for this so they didn't go all out to the extent that they normally do on international street but considering there's nothing no part of the event is actually taking place on international street and it's all taking place in old virginia i guess it's kind of understandable the closest thing to something special that they have on International Street for the Food and Wine Festival is the fact that they added one of their flags to their fountain that they have over here. They did a nice job with all the flowers. Jen pointed out, I guess they were, there are actually two flags here, but the second one fell down. No one just had the opportunity to put it back yet. Before we get further into the non-food and wine festival updates at the park, I wanted to mention that there will be a distinct lack of Raptera information in this video, despite the fact that King's Dominion just recently announced the coaster and also just recently put up displays for the coaster in the park. The reason there isn't much mention of Raptera in this video is because the same day this video was recorded, Saturday, August 3rd, we had a live stream for about 40 minutes at the park where we took a live look at the progress that they have been making on the coaster, which is significant, and also a look at the Raptera merchandise. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link to it up in the corner of the video right now. One thing I didn't mention during the live stream on August 3rd was that they have changed their gold pass signs for the 2025 season. They have already put the Raptera on their advertisement for the 2025 pass. So that's a nice way to entice people to sign up for it early, especially because it's cheaper earlier in the year. Okay, it's time for two parts of speculation here. Uh, none of this has been proven. It's just things that I've been reading online. I just thought that I would put it out there for you. The first is if you have been paying attention to King's Dominion news, the delirium has been down for quite some time for repairs, uh, supposedly restraint repairs. It looks like they are doing a lot of work on this right now and a lot of restraints have been replaced and since the last time we were here as a matter of fact there are people working on it as we speak i have heard that they may possibly open this up for haunts complete speculation no 
evidence behind the thought, but people are thinking that maybe this will open back up in time for this year's haunt. So we'll see if that comes to pass. This is one of my favorite flat rides at this park, so I really hope that that ends up being true. Yeah. I really enjoy seeing this being open again. Speculation number two, they've finally been doing some work to the former site of the Mac Bowl, which that's not speculation. You can tell that they've actually done things to it. They've even put out barricades out in the front to keep people from going near it. So that's not the speculation part. The speculation part is I've heard that they are planning on putting a restaurant that currently already exists at King's Dominion in this spot, just moving it to here from where it's currently located. Where, uh, which restaurant is still up for debate? I personally think it might be the Country Kitchen since they took the bulk of the Country Kitchen and turned it into the Premier, the Platinum Pass Holder Lounge and only had the pit at the Country Kitchen still standing. Other people think because this used to be a taco place, they might move Border Burrito in here, which would also be interesting. Both of these make sense. So if you have any thoughts on what may or may not be coming into this building, feel free to leave a comment below. We'd appreciate your thoughts. To further evidence the work that they're doing to the restaurant, the, the previous site of the Mac Bowl, they have all around where there used to be tables, they have these, please pardon our mess fences. They have some here and some more around the very back of the building which they removed all the tables but they still kept the umbrellas up. I'm assuming they can't take the actual umbrellas down and just leave the poles standing or they would have done that. If they can take the umbrellas down it's interesting that they chose to keep them up through all the construction. Interesting to note there is a new Project I Conquered Project 305 shirt in Plaza Gifts at the front of the park as well as in the gift shop in Jungle Expedition that retails for $29.99. The shirt is new and it gives the stats on the coaster even though the coaster's been here a while. Even though the shirt is new, the fact that they bothered to make a shirt with the name change makes me believe that Project 305 is the name that's here to stay at least for a decent amount of time for that coaster. So I don't expect a new coaster name anytime soon. Plaza Gifts is also a second location where you can find the Food and Wine Festival shirt in addition to Grizzly Gifts. Thank you so much. While we're at the front of the park, I wanted to ask, I noticed something today that I've never noticed here before and see if anybody else knows what this is in reference to. Here by the Upgrade Center and the Starbucks Coffee is this sign that says the Caprice Room. Does anybody know what the Caprice Room is? Because I was not aware of this until today. It's kind of tucked away back there, so it kind of caught me off guard. I'm very curious about it, so if anybody knows, please leave a comment. We'd appreciate that. So that's everything for the Food and Wine Festival for this year. Compared to Busch Gardens' Food and Wine Festival and also the one at Disney, which I guess is not really fair to compare to Disney, but compared to the other Food and Wine Festivals we've attended, this one is really small, kept in one tiny location with three different places to go for food, but it's the first year for it here at this park, so we'll give it a pass. They really, compared to the other ones, they really take the name Food and Wine Festival literally because they have just a little bit of food, which is basically all snack food, so don't come here expecting to eat a whole meal. And also when they say wine, they literally just mean wine. They even still buy their typical beers that they always sell, but they don't have any special alcohol that's not wine beer. So if you're not really a wine drinker, I wouldn't get too excited for the event. But I mean, overall, I mean, the big four, the band that they had here playing, they, they did a lot of good things for their first year. We really enjoyed it. So we hope you enjoyed this look at it, and we hope you have the opportunity to look at it as well. If you enjoyed the video, we would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. And also subscribe to the channel. Everybody like can subscribe to good help. Also, please be sure to check out our Instagram page, which is appearing up next to the Rattera logo right now. Right below that is our Instagram page. And right there under Jen's chin is our email address. We check all of our emails, so please be sure to send us a message, any questions, comments, concerns, constructive criticism you might have. 
We read it all and we appreciate any feedback that you have. So thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for watching, but the fun's not over yet. Click the box in front of my face for another fun video. Or click my tree to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss another video.